Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Todd Coons, and as you know, I do all things photography around here. Today I'm gonna to do something that, uh, I don't know if I've ever said this really before, but one of the reasons why I started this channel years ago was because I was so, boy, I don't even know the word. I was so dismayed by all the popular photography channels on YouTube that were teaching things that were just wrong. They were just giving bad information, and. And it, it just frustrated me because I'm like, you've got a million and a half subscribers and you're telling people the wrong things. And, and so I kind of got convicted that, you know, I had taught photography and I knew all these things and I had years and years of experience, but I didn't have a channel myself. So that was kind of one of my motivators, at least, to start this channel, to teach photography correctly, to inspire people to do photography, to do it right, and not to teach you things that are wrong. Okay, so today I want to set the record straight about something that I've heard a few times, but I just again heard it recently, and that is the thinking that a crop sensor camera lets in less light than a full frame sensor. After all, a bigger sensor is going to take in more light. That's the thinking behind uh, what I've heard on the internet a few times, and recently I actually heard a camera manufacturer's rep. I mean, this is somebody I would think would know, uh, you know had a little bit of authority on the subject, he said the same thing. And I actually questioned him, I said, or explain it to me, he goes, yes, a crop sensor camera will let in one and a half stops, he exactly said one and a half stops less light than a full frame sensor. And I said, you're telling me if we went out in the parking lot, took a handheld meter reading, and had a crop sensor and a full frame sensor, everything else is equal, that the image on the crop sensor would be a stop and a half darker, and he said yes, it'd be about a stop and a half darker. Okay, so that immediately hit me that I don't think that's right, but we're gonna test it out today, we're gonna see. So I've pulled together two cameras, as like as I could get it. I've got a Canon R7 crop sensor, I've got a Canon R5, this happens to be the Mark II, uh, so this is one of the latest, greatest full frames. I've got an RF 24 to 70 for each one, so I've got the exact same lens for each camera. And I've got a handheld meter. I'm gonna meter with this rather than meter with the meters in the camera. That way, if there's any variable on the metering, uh, which I don't think there should be, but we're gonna keep it as consistent as we can across the board, make it as fair and simple as possible. And my thinking is that each one of those images is going to be the same. The crop sensor doesn't let in less light. It's the exposure is gonna be the same. So if that's a confusion for you or you've heard this same thing, I'm gonna run out in the backyard and we're gonna test this thing and we're gonna find out what is actually true. Now before I run outside, I'm gonna set up both cameras so that they're exactly the same. Let's see here, we got the 24 to 70 RF. We're gonna be in manual mode. I'm gonna put the ISO on 100. I'm gonna put the screen brightness on four. Very important that we make sure both of those are the same. The screen brightness is kind of like, you know, calibrating your monitor. If one of them has the brightness way up and the other one has it way down, that's gonna look different. Um, so we wanna put that on the same. It's, it's also like your, you know, your iPhone. Sometimes you can look at an image and it looks really dark or bright but you have the ability to change the brightness of your iPhone screen. So we're gonna make sure those are both the same, and then I'm gonna make sure white balance is on daylight. So I'm gonna have the white balance the exact same, and all things else should be the same. If I can think of anything, I'll mention it when I get out there, but uh, then we will set our exposure the same based on the handheld meter reading. Okay, so I'm gonna set the ISO at 100 on my handheld meter. Probably move the Shutter speed up to 250 and see what kind of aperture that'll get us. Okay, so this is not gonna be probably the most sophisticated, uh, flashy test, if you will, but I got both cameras set up right here on the bed of my truck, pointing up at my car. Um, it's a little windy out here, so I've got my little dead cat thing on the microphone. You have to let me know how it sounds. Um, haven't tested this out yet. Uh, but excited for how this might work. Hopefully it'll uh, do well on location. Um, but I've got both cameras set up right here. I've got the handheld meter all set up at 100 ISO. Canon has a 1.6 crop factor, so I've got the 
I've got the crop sensor at 24 millimeters. Um, I've got the full frame at 38 millimeters, roughly. So they're going to give a very similar field of view. Um, so hopefully the, the image will be the same. I need to make sure there's no sun on the front of these lenses so nothing's affecting anything like that. I just wanted a simple, straightforward, well-lit, evenly lit scene. So uh, we'll keep that part of it simple. But let's get a meter reading. Let's take a couple images and see where we go from there. Two fifty at one four. Let's let's actually take this up because I think those are two eight. Let's see. Let's change the ISO to. Let's go to four hundred. Keep this simple. Sixtieth of a second. Four and a half. Actually, almost five six. Actually, that was five six even. Sixtieth of a second. 60th of a second, f5.6, ISO 400. So I'll make the adjustments on the camera and we'll take a couple pictures. Okay, the other thing I'm not sure I said was I'm gonna put these both on RAW. I don't want any processing in the JPEG process to affect it. You know, an R7 may process different than an R5, I don't know, but uh, we're gonna keep them raw, keep them nice and pretty much, I mean, as, as exactly the same as I can think to do it. Now, I will tell you that I'm not used to Canon, so I'm fuddling through. Okay, this one's already on raw. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let me do, let me do this too while I'm getting this set up. Um, big shout out to Spartan Photo Center. You guys know I've talked about them before. Love that camera store. They are fantastic. They are the ones that let me take these two cameras out. Um, yeah, they're just fantastic. SpartanPhotoCenter.com. Uh, if you're in the need for anything photographic, they're fantastic. They will ship anywhere in the country, so you don't even have to be in Spartanburg, or you don't even have to be in South Carolina. Okay, so let's get these kind of set up about the same. Like I said, 60th of a second, f5.6, ISO 400. Let's take one shot with the R7. Let's do that one more time. Do it with the R5. They sound significantly different. Okay, so very simple shot. Um, nothing portfolio-wise by any means, it's just a simple generic shot. But let me show you the results of this thing and uh, I think I'll make my point. Okay guys, I brought these into the studio so they're a little easier to see. The reflections on the screens out there were a little crazy. Now. This is the R7 on the right, and this is the R5 on the left. And if you can see, visually they look very, very similar. If I come over here and hit the info button twice, look at that histogram. It's nearly identical. I'm gonna actually take this off handheld and come in here a little tighter. All right, now that's the information on the R7. This is the information on the R5. And again, there's one image. R5. R7. If it'll focus, there we go. R7, R5. Histogram's almost identical. All right, guys, there you have it. Just a simple little demonstration of, you know, a truth about photography. And again, kind of motivated by some of the misinformation that's out there. And believe me, there is a ton of information to be taken in. And if you're new to photography, it's easy to get sucked into some of these sites that are very popular, have a lot of subscribers. They're flashy and they sound great. You know, it... it, it it's inevitable you're gonna think that they know what they're talking about, and a lot of times they don't. So, you know, if anything else, my point is just be careful what you listen to online, ask around, get some different opinions, and ultimately just DM me on Instagram. I'll shoot you straight. And the other thing we figured out is that a crop sensor does not take in less light than a full-frame camera. 
So just get that out of your head. If for any reason you're thinking my crop sensor is inferior to a full frame or you're hesitant to get a crop sensor because you're, it's not as good, you know, it doesn't bring in less light. Now, there is some truth that a full frame camera will do better in low light. That may be true. Maybe a crop sensor gets noisier faster, but you're not losing any light by going to a smaller sensor. It's just not true. I think we proved that today. But if you got comments, questions, or complaints, leave them in the comment section. As always, I love to hear from you guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't like the video. But if you give me a thumbs down, leave a comment and tell me why. If you haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.